deep in the heart of Choctaw County, Mississippi in 1934. Roy Blackwood, his younger brothers Doyle and James, and Roy's son R.W. Blackwood Sr. formed the musical phenomenon that would become the most well-known and respected name in gospel music, the Blackwood Brothers. Why don't you swing down the street, chair and stop and look at me, right? Swing down, chair and stop and look at me, right? Rock me, Lord, rock me, Lord, come and easy. I got a hole on me, hold the side, why don't you swing down the street? Through the years, members of the Blackwood Brothers have won eight Grammy Awards, 27 Dove Awards, and five All-American Music Awards. The Blackwood Brothers were the first artists to be inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. The Southern Gospel Music Museum inside the gates of Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, recognizes the Blackwood family's significant impact on the music industry with an impressive display. James and R.W. Blackwood Sr. also hold places of honor in the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame in Pigeon Forge. In the moments to come, with the help of country music legend Charlie Daniels and many other Blackwood family friends, you will hear the remarkable story of how the hand of God planted a song in the hearts of a family of Mississippi sharecroppers. And that song took them to the top of the music world. I'm Shelley Lane Blackwood. Ron, R.W., Donna, and I want to sincerely thank you for joining us. It is our hope that you will be touched by the tragedy and inspired by the triumph of the Blackwoods. We're telling you a song, hello. It's the Blackwood Brothers. Gospel singing song. The Blackwood Brothers are legends in the history of gospel music. Why don't you rock my soul? With harmonies as tight as a drum and inventive arrangements that made audiences beg for more, this family group was destined for greatness. And yet their story is about much more than the music. It's about the struggles we all deal with, money problems, career demands, and family tragedies that threaten to break the spirits of these gospel music pioneers. How did they overcome these obstacles? Well, you might call it a secret weapon, except the Blackwoods are awfully vocal about it. It is no secret what God can do. You know, it's amazing. Back then, they had so little, and yet they had love, and they had family, and they had a love for God. As it turns out, they had a talent for music, too one that did not go unnoticed. Eldest brother Roy, a traveling evangelist, returned home to Mississippi in 1934. It wasn't long before he and his brothers formed a singing group. Roy added his son R.W. to make them a quartet, and from that moment on, gospel music would never be the same. Family harmonies and family groups uh, can never be gotten around when it, when it comes to singing. And the Lord gave them the, the built-in harmonies. Each drop of blood, each blood me a on you. With their inspired harmonies and heartfelt delivery, it didn't take long for the Blackwood Brothers to gain in popularity. They toured from church to church and sang on numerous radio shows. I remember hearing them on the radio, I think it was every day at noon, from Shenandoah, Iowa. And I'll never forget the announcer before the Blackwood Brothers would come on, would say, as deep-rooted as the cypress trees, so are the Southland spirituals, brought to you by whatever sponsor, and sung by the Blackwood Brothers Quartet from Shenandoah, Iowa. The crowds were even bigger out in radio land. An estimated one million people listen to the Blackwoods radio broadcast every day. In 1947, Bill Lyles made his debut as a member of the Blackwood Brothers Quartet, and the results were mighty pleasing. With the booming voice of Bill Lyles on bass, the Blackwood Brothers were poised not only to achieve great success for themselves, but also to influence a whole new generation of singers. You will find many country artists who have come from the gospel side and love gospel music. My late wife, Tammy Wynette, grew up in church, playing piano in church just as I did. Her first love was southern gospel music. 
Tammy Wynette wasn't the only popular singer to be influenced by the Blackwood Brothers' sound. With his father Roy singing bass for the quartet, Cecil Blackwood often sat in on rehearsals, and one day he introduced the group to a new friend of his, a guy named Elvis Presley. I had met him in Sunday school. Class had already started, and this fellow walked in, and everybody looked at him, and it looked a little unusual, a little different to the average person. His hair was a little longer than everybody, everyone else's. He had his ducktails a little higher than everybody else. He had on a, looked like a second-hand coat, red, and was carrying a pair of gloves, and very quiet, and he just sat down, and the Brother Carter says, we have a new person here, what's your name? He said, Elvis Presley. Well, that name meant nothing. Never heard it before. Didn't know that we'd hear a lot of it later. And so some of the guys kind of laughed at his clothing. Well, I, I didn't, and I talked to him, and we became friends. Elvis Presley would change the sound of popular music forever. But before he began his meteoric rise to the top, the Blackwoods would make their own mark in their own unique way. First, they signed a recording contract with RCA Records, and then they stunned the music industry by forming an alliance with their stiffest competitors, the Statesman Quartet. Skeptics laughed at the idea of the two groups touring together, saying that the business was far too cutthroat for both to survive. Little did they know that gospel singers do things a little bit differently. The enormous popularity of the Blackwood Brothers meant they had to turn down requests for their shows because they couldn't possibly drive to all the places who wanted them. Baritone R.W. Blackwood proposed a solution, to which James reluctantly agreed. In 1952, we decided to purchase uh, an airplane and uh, fly to our engagements. And so we flew for two and a half years uh, to all of our engagements. And uh, my nephew, R.W., was the pilot, and our co-pilot was Bill Lyles, our bass singer. R.W. would take me riding, and I thought it was great. We'd fly over the house, and we would could see where we lived, and we'd fly around Memphis, and it was an exciting thing. In spite of some misgivings, the Blackwoods took full advantage of their new mode of transportation by accepting more concert requests than ever. By this time, they were a household name in the South, but in some parts of the country, folks were missing out on their inspired gospel sound. That all changed with the help of a man named Arthur Godfrey and a new invention called television. By the 1950s, over half of all American families owned a TV set, and the Blackwood Brothers made history by becoming the first gospel group ever to appear on national television, winning first place on one of the era's most popular shows, Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. No doubt about it, the boys were on top of the world. Little did they know that in just three short weeks, they would plummet from the peak of elation into the depths of despair. In 1954, the group made plans to fly the quartet plane to a concert date in Alabama. Just before taking off, pilot R.W. Blackwood drove his young son Ron to a baseball game near the airport. The weather was beautiful, not a cloud in the sky, and yet somehow the boy sensed danger. He waved at me as he left, and I watched him as he went down that park. I just stood there with my glove and my ball. And uh, I had this, I don't know what, why, but I just had a strange feeling. Didn't know why, but I watched him till the car disappeared. So I went on playing my ball game. And uh, the ball game was almost over. And that was back in the days when they didn't have the laws and rules against buzzing the town with a plane or something. People did it all the time. Well, here I saw the, this plane coming. Of course, I looked up and saw a daddy. And he flew down like that and dipped his wing at me, like that. And when, he, when the plane went over, I could see him looking out. I could see just a part of his head. And they took the flying back and went and did like that. And, uh... The last time I ever saw him. 46 years. And I still. R.W. Blackwood and Bill Lyles were on a collision course with Destiny. But first, there would be one last concert. 
At a peach festival in Clanton, Alabama, the Blackwood Brothers Quartet sang their hearts out for the Lord. Now, good night. May God bless you all. The crowds begged for more, but the boys had made plans to fly home that very night. So they took their final bows and headed for the tiny dirt airstrip just outside of town. Before they loaded everyone on board, RW and co-pilot Bill Lyles decided to take the plane up for a flight test, and they weren't alone. A local teenager named Johnny Ogden asked to be taken along for the ride. Unfortunately, the singers agreed. In an instant, half the Blackwood Brothers Quartet was gone. R.W. and Bill Lyles had brought so much joy and laughter to the group. It was impossible to imagine what life would be like without them. As news of the crash spread, family, friends, and fellow musicians struggled to come to terms with what had happened. When Daddy died in the plane crash, um, I was 13 years old. I took it pretty heavy because he was my hero. They came over the new service. And, uh, you, you know, we, we just, and, and we had just seen uh, R. W. and Bill, uh, maybe not more than a month before that. I truly was heartbroken because I just, there was nobody like R. W. Blackwood. There is no night for in his life you never The Blackwood Brothers Quartet was reborn with J.D. Sumner singing bass and James' nephew Cecil Blackwood on baritone. Their first concert together was scheduled for Clanton, Alabama, the site of the plane crash. This was about a, a month and a half after the plane crash, and right back to the airport hangar, we did a concert without even rehearsal. Bill Shaw, James Blackwood, Cecil Blackwood, J.D. Sumner, Jackie Marshall's piano and that started our career back up there at the airport with several thousand people there to hear us. And Elaine Blackwood, R.W.'s widow, Ruth Lyles, Bill Lyles' widow, they were there and the kids, we introduced them. But I remember being there, I remember them introducing Cecil, but I think the one that got me the most was J.D. Sumner. All I know is I saw a guy just stand up, looked like he, looked like he went all the way to the top of the mountain as big as he was. J.D. Sumner built a bridge that night to R.W. Sun Run, establishing a loving bond that would last for the rest of his life. He said, nobody could take your daddy's place. He said, I'm here to help. And J.D. was my friend the day he died. How long has there been Blackwoods singing gospel music in public. Well, there's a book right here. It says 1899. 18. So since 1890s, the Blackwood family has been singing. And there have been all kind of different variations of the group. That's About true. how many different Blackwoods have sung? Any idea? R.W.? Well, the Blackwood brothers originated in 1934 with grandfather Roy Blackwood and uh, Doyle Blackwood, our father, R.W. Blackwood Sr., and James Blackwood. Now they're all in glory. Our dad was killed in a plane crash when we were little boys. They reorganized. That was in Clanton, Clanton Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when in the 50s? 1954. 54. And they reorganized with J.D. Sumner on the bass and Jackie Marshall playing the piano and Cecil Blackwood, our uncle, was baritone. And then uh, I grew up and became a junior Blackwood brother in 1963 and went into the Blackwood brothers. So are you now? Here's what happened to the Durrells. They, they didn't want to be brothers, so I don't we started them. calling them Blackwood singers. When the girls <laughs> sing, we're the Blackwood singers. When it's the guys, we're Blackwood quartet, Blackwood brothers. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a native Houstonian, and um, the way I met R.W. was going to the gospel concerts down yeah. there in Houston. There was something about it, even as a youngster and as a teenager 
you'd walk in and there was a spirit about it and it would already put a smile on your face when they'd start singing. And you walked out happy, your feet tapping, your hands clapping. And that's just, to me, what Southern Gospel does. It puts a song in your heart and praise in your heart. Yes. Yeah. Shelly, when the black would stand up to, to sing, what is your goal? What are you wanting to accomplish? I want to represent my Savior well. Amen. And with excellence, with integrity, and with music that will bring hope and life to the people he loves and died for. Don't you just love? Southern gospel music all around. Don't you just love, don't you just love that gospel music? Don't you just love, don't you just love that southern sound? Can't you just feel His holy presence when there's southern gospel music all around? When there's southern gospel music all around? 